Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here, and a, uh, this is going to be the first of a series of videos I'm putting out this week, and as you know, um, it is, uh, what is today? It's actually Saturday and Friday, I usually put out the HPS watch list that goes out to members of Day Trading Radio, I'll be getting that out today also, um, but I have a lot of things here, we're going to be doing a big market radar with a big call in the market, you're going to be, you, you know, that's going to be a separate video, but I'm going to add it to the, uh, the HPS watch list also, like I normally do. Um... Then we're going to go over what we've been trading this week. The HPS setups have been rocking. They've been great. I want to break them down, show you why they work so good, uh, you know, why it's so important. Actually, we're going to break that down in a smaller time frame and show you how you could profit from the HPS setups on a one-minute time frame and trade options off of it and the futures off of it using the tradeometer. So that's going to be another video using the tradeometer because um, we actually did show you uh, on Friday a great trade off the tradeometer. If we converted that trade over or took that trade in options, it would have actually um, given, us, given us about a 30% return on our trade. And that's, uh, that's a, a pretty um, c consistent thing when you have a tradeometer set up on a one-minute time frame, trading in the money, you know, very close to, um, you know, weekly options on on any of the uh, you know indexes from the SPY or the NASDAQ or the Russell so we're gonna talk about that in a video so that's gonna be a separate video altogether so look for all these videos coming out and then of course what's on the HBS for next week cause that's gonna be our money maker so this is start start things off talking about the market radar and uh, this is interesting because I have I'm actually um, like I said I'm on the uh, I'm in the room I'm actually in my office today and uh, over the past week, we've actually been in the process of changing our streaming platform over to a new service. And so there's been, um, you know, some tech things that we've been dealing with. And then I got some kind of stomach flu or something that uh, happened midweek. So this past week was just a, a bundle of crap that was going on. I'm glad to be past, past it. I feel much better today. And uh, we're working towards... Um, you know, getting the video stream back on the dashboard. So if you're a member of Day Trading Radio, you should have that dashboard working for you on Monday as uh, as normal. So I, you know, appreciate hanging out there. All right, I turned down my alarm. I mean, my phone uh, ringer, a lot of uh, calls as we still continue to work on the uh, site. But anyway, we're going to talk about the market radar and I was just, you know, like logged in today, and I had actually had a couple, um, a couple questions in the YouTube chat today. And it's one person was asking me, uh, where do I see the S and P going from here? And it's interesting that, that you know to come up that because that's one of the uh, topics of this uh, market radar. I wanted to talk about how close we are to the highs, recent highs. And how, you know, this is going to maybe come to a shock. I've been very bullish. I do think we're going to get to the highs. But I also think we're going to actually reverse right after we get through those highs. Now, our recent all-time highs happened here back in January. And uh, give or take a couple points, basically. Uh, let me see where, where the price is. You know, I'm not going to top tick it here. But, you know, around that... Uh, 2850 area. Yeah, around that 2850. Yeah, right around that 2850 area. We're at 2800. That's 50 points away. Now, overall, our number one go to setup and understanding the bigger trend and being and trading the direction of the trend is always important. And all that thing, all that helps us determine if we're going to be long or short in the HPS, usually. You know, it's. Here we had divergences, here we had divergences, nice move up, nice move up. Here we actually had a little divergence too. I mean, it's just amazing that each one of these setups has been so pretty clear on the next move up. And even out of this flag, we kind of had a mini divergence happening and a pop back up. Now we're kind of embedded. We're up, we did a retracement on this trend line from this one to going up. We broke down through some, some uh, I think that was probably the tariff news or something. And then we actually rotated back up and just blew that out. So everything pointing to the market taking out the highs. Now, seeing this a lot, so I'm going to make a call on this. I do think we get up to those highs. Um, next week's a little bit more difficult, and it's always difficult when we have 
overhanging news, and we don't know if there's any kind of sound sound bite that's going to drop, any type of news that's going to drop, continuation of the trade talks. That could affect the market short term. But, I, you know, really short term, like starting off the day on Monday 30 points down or 100 points higher. You know, it just really depends on the market uh, news. But overall, let's just say that the market is going to move back up to the highs. And I, you know, it's, we're definitely climbing a, um, what we call a wall of worry. The trade talks, the everything that is going on, geopolitical events, everything that's going on has not affected this market. It's basically the market has rallied into this. So I expect some good news to come out of this. And this is, you know, again, if bad news comes out, then we have to look at it a different way. But I do expect some good news to come out of the trade talks. And that's going to propel us to new highs. And because the market is already... Uh, we're going to call this pricing in this good news because you can see it already starting to move up. Even though we have all this, you know, we just had a recent tariffs being levied and then China coming back retaliating and, uh, you know, and they're talking about uh, more 10% more uh, taxes on 200 billion of products coming out of China. All this is hitting the market, yet the market continues to push higher. So we're going to get some good news and we're going we're gonna to actually get through those highs. And when we get through those highs, I am going to be extremely cautious, and I expect the market to reverse. I think that's going to be a sell-the-news event. I think the market's already pricing in this, uh, this, this good news. And we're going to get to the highs, and people are going to think, oh, it's clear blue skies ahead. Nothing could hurt us now. Uh, we're breaking out all-time highs. That is the time to be most concerned about a pullback and a correction. So, you know, my guess, my call... We make it to highs. Time frame, it's hard to say. It could happen fast. Um, but we're going to get through the highs, and then I'd be very cautious on a, a pretty severe pullback. And I would actually start to look at those trades to the downside, if that's going to be puts or just you know understanding that we're going to be looking at the sectors that might be topping out. We're going to have negative divergences setting up. Um, but I do feel tech probably will be one of those levels that is going to give us a problem. Now, Red Hat, this has been one of the stronger stocks uh, recently. Uh, it's a great tech stock, and we got, it got beat down really bad when it came out with earnings. And this could be a crack in the overall tech sector. Could be a crack in the overall tech sector. Um, not to say it's showing up across the board. There's big stocks out, th out there like Amazon, Netflix. We have earnings season coming up. Uh, but I'm concerned about the tech leading us down. I mean, that's the highly weighted on the S&P. Um, these big stocks, everything from, you know, of course, Google and, and Facebook and Amazon and Apple. And, uh, you know, when these things get hit, they're going to drag down the market. So that's it. You know, looking at the S&P making a run to new highs, uh, being very cautious and looking to probably sell uh, or you know look at at looking at some uh, possible shorts up here if we actually start to see a reversal and a reversal what might not be that hard to find we might actually get a spike in a big reversal candle we'll have to see what happens you know but I'll be on top of it if we see any type of reversals up here I'm going to jump all over it we'll take those we'll take those trades to the downside be it puts or options or or you know or just you know any which way we have the ETFs so you could go short you got the pro short ETFs. We give you a three times return of the index. Um, so we have a lot of ways of actually tackling this to the downside. And I think that's going to be coming our way. And this uh, pullback, how far do we get up here? Maybe we get up here in the, uh, you know, going into August, we go into the new highs, but then going into the next couple months, a good pullback going into uh, the holiday session. And then from the holiday session on, we probably get a uh, move back up. So move up through the highs, then look for a correction. Uh, the, you know, sell the news type of correction, and then from that point on, we'll probably time it, and we'll have to come up with another longer-term um, market radar. So that's the uh, the big one, um, and that's it on that segment right there. Going into next week, uh, market's still strong. Like I said, I think we have a bias to the upside. Uh, we get a little bit higher, get closer up there. Next level, twenty-eight thirty-seven was our last gap down level. We gap down. I think we eventually get through that, like I said. And the market closed pretty good. We're embedded across the board on the daily. 
um, on the hourly. But I'm more excited of trading the short-term setups uh, going into next week. So I'm not really concerned about you know, where we're going to go, where we're going to end up at the end of the week. What I'm more concerned about is what kind of setups we're going to get on the tradeometer and how do we can profit uh, on trading uh, some of the, you know, just divergences and just, you know, picking picking the market apart and making a good profit no matter which way it goes, up or down. So that's going to be another video coming up. Um, the next video I'm going to work on is what we traded this week at Day Trading Radio and the HPS setups that work so good. I was really banging the table on a few stocks the last couple of weeks. IBM, SWK, I'm starting to bang the, uh, the, <laughs> bang, bang the table on a couple of new stocks this week. We're going to go into those. So, uh, all right. So, let's, um, let's jump over to the HPS setups. Now, like I said, we've had a very busy week here uh, between... You know, streaming the site on different platforms. We're using the YouTube platform. I sometimes use the Facebook. We have our regular day trading radio uh, platform we've been uh, fixing. So we're going to be working on that over the weekend, and things will be uh, going. But I'm going to actually show you what we call the HPS setups. Now, the, this is the back end. If you're a member of day trading radio, you'll get this list of stocks. This list of stocks goes out every week to the members. And basically, it... it, it identifies the stocks that fit the criteria of an HPS setup. An HPS setup is a whole methodology based on uh, really five different indicators, pattern recognition, and a lot of other things that I'm not going to go into. But there's a lot of information on the um, on high probability setups. If you go to my YouTube page or um, you know, Day Trader Rockstar, Day Trading Radio, do a search, high probability, you'll find plenty of videos out there. Also do a cor course on it. Um, at theschoolofstock.com, theschoolofstock.com. Um, dot com. If you click on that, there we go. All right, here we have a couple of the courses: the Ultimate Divergence Course and the HPS Methodology Course. So, just to give you an outline of the HPS methodology, there's a lot of uh, information on this on the school of stock you can actually see all the different trading um, modules and the lessons that you get with this so this kind of breaks you down breaks down what the HPS is about um, you know there's just a lot of information there's some free free uh, things also there but a lot of different lessons all you know you could pretty pretty much piece it together what I'm really paying attention to the wedges trapdoor trend lines support and resistance stochastics the foundation of the whole system a lot of good stuff there. All right, so back to the HPS, and uh, I'm going to go through these. You know, because we pretty much, you know, due to the the uh, streaming issue, we kind of uh, talked about a lot of these. So you might as well see them how they're performing. So remember, all the setups come with a chart. They come with a buy tr trigger and a sell trigger and a stop. The chart that gets sent out every Friday, which is going to be the next video going out, consists of, you know, let's just take an example of Citigroup here. Let's take a look here. All right, there's your chart. And when you get the chart sent out, it basically the video goes along with it like, like I'm doing right now, and I'll discuss why this is an HPS setup. In this case, this is a perfect what we call textbook divergence. And, um, you know, if there's any notes that go with it, I started my position. Uh, we put down why we want to, you know, the buy trigger, the profit zone, and the stop. Now, whenever we have a divergence set up, you always put that stop one tick under the divergence low. Remember, two stages of a divergence, the first low, the second low, the low, and the higher low. Put a stop underneath that. In this case, we had like a three or four day consolidation. I just wanted this to, you know, because of the divergence, we have a really good chance of this breaking out to the upside um, of this channel. And also the 200 period moving average to channel line is really our, our area of, uh, you know, our area of interest at this point to take profits on. So we click on that arrow as it updates you automatically. And it just only took a day, uh, two days to get to our profit and we took that off we actually uh, took that off it was a nice profit on that that JP Morgan was the HPS 
Now you can see a couple days later it dropped down. That was an earnings. It just recently came out with earnings on Friday, so it did drop it back down. But that already hit its target. We're already in and out of that trade on the first two days of the week. First two days of the week it actually hit its target. So we got out of it. Um, don't have to worry about it anymore. Same thing because because of these divergences. The J.P. Morgan also was a divergence, and again, you see the green, which means that the the, uh, the price has hit our buy zone. The gold means the price has hit its target price, and if there's no red there, it means it hasn't been stopped. And again, you'll notice a similar chart here, which is interesting because if all the financials are setting up the same way, they tend to all move together. Here we have um, a couple different things. You had a divergence which is good, that lower low and the higher low right here. You also have what I call a 20 EMA channel line breakdown, channel line bounce. So it's a 200 EMA, that red line. Once you break down through that and you have a, a defined trend line underneath it, the market tends to come down to that and bounces back up to the 200 period moving average. So in this case, we took that trade also. And then boom, that next following day, because of just the greatness of a divergence setup, um, we took profits. Now, it's actually holding up in our profit zone. See, I also put down earnings out next week. That was on Friday. That was July 13th. Today is the 14th. Um, you know, higher risk holding into earnings. We didn't want to hold into earnings, so we sold it. We probably made the right choice. Anyway, this will eventually set up in another HPS. You'll get another alert, another chart, and another buy buy zone and you want to buy. But that has hit its target. So good uh, trade on that one this week. Citigroup, oh, actually, sorry about that one. We already did that second Citigroup. I put a second chart on that. I'll have to look at that second one because the first one is the one that we wanted to use. Um, BLL. Ball Corporation. We're going to have some fun with that one this week. This was a falling wedge pattern divergence. Now, the divergence, you can see a slight turn up here as this big candlestick. This is an important candlestick. Again, my note said, set a stop after the reversal candle is identified and place the stop under that candle at the low of the day. All right. Um, stop was that. So we placed that candle. Look at, look at this. Let's see how this thing played out now. Look at that. Now, if that is a combination of what we call divergence, pattern recognition, um, everything. It was just a, a perfect HPS setup and a reversal candle. It's three out of five indicators. We want to be in it there. That was also an engulfing pattern. And, in, you know, the candles have been lining up. This was, I was extremely bullish on this. And we pushed right back up. Our first target would be the retracement trend line from this candle right here down to this candle. And then you draw that trend line up there. And even though you chop through it, it still maintains its integrity uh, further on. And this is actually a good example. We push back up and run into problems. Um, again, great, great, great setup there. Remember, the HPS uh, setups are, are going to identify the, the, uh, the best zone that the market's going to pivot or the stock or whatever you're going to be trading is going to pivot and go from one direction to the other and you're going to capture the fastest move in the shortest amount of time that's what an hps zone is all right so this is um, even though this is a nice falling wedge pattern the zone here the reversal candle the reversal divergence with the momentum shifting underneath the behind the scenes you can't really see what's going on here but the formula of the, the stochastic divergence is really pointing out momentum shifting even though the price is moving higher uh, price is moving lower excuse me but the momentum has shifted higher and started to move back up that's what we're seeing here on, on on the divergence and how that is calculated is a little bit more complicated but there's a mathematical calculation that compares the price and the uh, you know it, it, everything has a uh, what we call a, um, a look back period so we're looking back, in this case, 14 period. This is actually a 9.3, so we're looking back nine candles, and we're actually measuring out the momentum, and the momentum is shifting here. We can see it's starting to shift, and that's really being calculated by looking at the range of the day. 
So each day we're looking at the range, and if it closes near the highs of the session or that day, it gets put into the formula, and we start to see it react on our oscillator indicator here. And that gets a little bit more complicated. I don't expect everyone to understand, especially if you're just starting out trading. But it's the most important indicator in my my book uh, that you could be learn learning. You know, the divergence indicator and a pure divergence indicator. A pure divergence signal is worth its weight in gold. I mean, that's how you really want to make money. And for those out there not making money, it's probably because you don't have the patience to wait for a great setup, or you're not, you're not, you know, you're just not trading the divergences. You're trading some some other style of trading. So, um, and all the ones that you know, that, that's the also thing uh, on the, the also thing. The other thing about the HPS is that we want to have divergent setups on this. In some cases we don't. Some cases I put a you know what we call a, a playbook play on there. Maybe it's a channel line bounce or a, a flag or something. But majority of these will be HPS type of zones. Um, now the IBM. Still good, you know, even though it hit its stop area. Hit its stop area. We had a little uh, buy signal here. We broke out. We wanted to see this. It did pull back and broke down. I'm just going to re review it. Um, came back down, pushed back up. It's basically in that same zone. I do expect this to actually move back up in, in, into the profit zone. Um, but that trade is no longer um, valid on the HPS because it did break down here. I'm still holding a lot of my calls, and they're working out pretty good. And I do expect them to follow through on IBM. As we're starting to break out of this big downward trend trend line. But that did register as a red dot. All right. The, if it's just a plain green dot, uh, then it's still active. So let's take a look at the JCI here. Johnson controls again this is what we call a channel within a channel HPS channel within a channel recognizable multiple pivots pivot here big reversal candle big pivot up here you can start to tr connect those pivots with a trend line and when you see that they start to really um, line up and be a perfect parallel channel line then you start to you know you want to trade off of those now here was a perfect divergence you had a low here and a, a lower low and a higher low it was a picture perfect divergence and a big pop back up. And then we had a nice pullback. Uh, and the pullback came back into this zone here. And, you know, because we are holding into two channels, typically we break out of the channel, the inner channel, to the up, upper part of the, the bigger channel. So here you can see this tight, tight channel that's moving down. You have the big, big channel. You have the divergence here. It already gave us one big move. We came back down. Put another buy zone in here because we expect this smaller channel to break out, and now it's still green. So that means it hasn't really, hasn't really um, gotten to its profit zone yet. We came close. We held off of the the stop there, and we're still right in that zone. You know, we're starting to break out of this, and it's still active. You know, and the truth is now looking at this stock going into next week, whatever that high is, I have to move over. Um, 30, 30, looks like, what is that, 35, 35, 33, so called 35, 40 would be this breakout. It's almost a little inverted head and shoulders pattern that's playing out. So it still looks good. No problems on this. It's actually holding that trend line. Johnson controls. It's a little extended probably on the stochastics, but we still have a lot of space up there. That's why it's still active. Here we have JCI. Um, excuse me. Um, what is this? UTX. United Technologies. Um, this is a, a big reversal candle, coil stochastic, a channel within a channel, and I actually was looking for a pullback on this. You know, this was typical of what I like to buy in buy in weakness, but hold above that good. You know, re, you know, I didn't want to chase this. Basically, we already got a one, two, three, four days head start. So I said, you know what? Good shot that we actually pull back because we're, we're actually probably a little bit overbought on the stochastics. And um, it never pulled back. It just continued to run. And one thing you could see on this is that stochastic level right here, it was halfway into there. It was about a 50 mark. It wasn't overbought at that point. 
And now if we look back at a different chart on this, you'll probably see, let me take a look at the UTX. All right, here's that. All right, here's Altria. Now, Altria is a new position I just got in again today or yesterday. Started a new position. I'll talk about it on the HPS watch list. But this was our last setup on Altria. And again, it was just, just showing examples of what you get on the HPS. It's a lower trend line, big steep sell off. And kind of what we call an X marks the spot. There's two trend lines. There's a there's a lower big channel line here. We're really using this. We're not using this big, um, big candle smackdown because lots of times those will be just a lot of noise. So it might be one trade, two trades down here that react, and then we move, we see majority of the trade up here. But there was a good pivot area back here, a good pivot area here. It lines up well with that one in the closing uh, price here. So all that looking as a good parallel channel. And then you had this underlying trend line, um, and it's called the X marks the spots, where two trend lines cross and being oversold at that point. And from that point on, it ended up turning into a divergence. You pushed a little and pulled back. The uh, trading view charts, if you use the trading view charts, for, for some reason they don't carry the stochastics after you do a... Um, when you put it into this style of trade where you actually could set up your trade and then push the button it doesn't update it so I always have to go back to the other um, other charts which is real time on the let me get this up here which is real time on this so let's take a look at the Altria so again you can see the the um, that little low trend line and we kind of popped back down here we made a higher low that was really the divergence and then we had another good divergence back here and that's the one I recently just took uh, based off of that divergence we took a, a position on that even though we're extended here a divergence is more powerful than uh, you know just being embedded or being overbought it t typically means that a bigger trend is starting and uh, you know considering we're coming after a second divergence here we didn't get much of a move we rotated back down and we got another divergence. I expect this one to move back up and uh, take out that 200 period moving average or at least get back up to it. I think it's a good risk reward trade, but I'll, I'll, I'll outline that trade in, a, in another video coming up. But again, you can see a divergence is a divergence. And when you have a great divergence, this is even a stronger divergence, what I call a mid pattern divergence. Lots of times that low has to come with the stochastics underneath that 20 line. When that stochastic holds above the 20 line, pushes back up, and then we come back and hold above the 20 line, but show a divergence between the lows and the stochastic, that's what I call mid-pattern or mid-rotation divergence. We never really get back down into an oversold level. And that is actually a strong, the strongest type of divergence. So, you know, that actually looks good. Now, it's already had a little run and is extended here, but because of the divergence, and we're holding that 20 and this kind of a base here. I went, I took a long here on the, uh, I think I took some, what do I have on that? Yeah, I took the options. On September 21st, 60 calls, I paid $1.42. So, going all the way out to September, I think we're going to make some money on that. And I'll break that down on the next video. Again, to go back on that SWK, we had a good trade in this earlier in the week. Um, it did kind of get a smack down when the, the, I think it was a, another announcement on the Chinese um, USA trade talks. They kind of smacked these stocks down, gapped it down. But we already were in it, and we already had we were already starting to take some profits on it. Uh, the gap down bought back into the gap down. I definitely think that you could buy it back here and start moving back up, which we are doing. Everything here looks pretty good still. Uh, Stanley Black and Decker, nice support line. So that carries into, uh, it will carry into next week. I think that is still still set up, right? Let me, um, let me double check that. SWK, all right, here it is. So that's still active. 
we came within 50 cents of the uh, target here. Look at where our target, look at where the trade was activated. And we actually moved all the way up to the high here was 138.49. Our target was 139. So about 50 cents away from our target. Again, 138.59. Our buy trigger was 134. So we got four, you know, four point move on that. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's like hand grenades and horseshoes. You get close and sometimes you just don't hit the target. Like I said, there was some news that came out, spiked this one down, but you can see the fast recovery and it's starting to push back up. It's still active. This is all automated on the back end. So if you remember, you get those alerts when they trigger. And if it doesn't trigger, you don't get the alert. And if you get a stop out, you get the alert. This still looks like a good divergence. We already started taking profits on it. Um, and I still think we actually get back up to our profit zone. Now remember, I, the video I just did before, it's actually added on to this video. But remember we discussed before, I see Vilger in the chat room there. Uh, we're talking about, I don't know if you caught this earlier, is I really feel that, you know, the market is getting to a point where we do get through this high, but then from that point on, we reverse pretty hard. Um, you know, day by day, we're going to get fluctuation in the market based off of news. But I do think that, the, you know, eventual positive news is going to be enough to pop us through, but that news is already going to be priced in. As we can see, the price is actually climbing a wall of worry, even with all the talk of the trade wars. So I'm looking for this to take out the highs, but from that point on, to probably take a pretty, not in a, too aggressive uh, short position, but to concentrate on Cap, cap, capturing a short somewhere up in the uh, at new highs, and we'll probably uh, identify that by a big reversal candle, and we just have to go out far enough on there. Uh, you know, it's going to be a choppy session, uh, you know, a top. But I think that that this this sets up perfectly how we're reading everything, how the news flow is coming out, how the market is rallying into the news flow, and we're going to get some good news. It's going to pop, and we're going to be actually buying. You know, the market's already actually priced in that news. So we're actually going to sell the positive news if we get back above all-time highs. I think that's key also, get back above all-time highs. highs. So I'm looking at that. I'm actually going to say, all right, we get through there. I'm really going to be looking at a, uh, a position. But it's, other things have to play out too. We want to see some kind of reversal candle, um, something to kind of add to our you know, everything is based off of HPS, so we want to have a combination of things happen. Maybe it's a divergence. Maybe we pull back a little and we spike higher and we put a sell divergence in. Maybe it's a big reversal candle. Maybe it's we take this lower trend line here, which is pretty exact here between these two pivots, and we, we drag it. We give you a parallel trend line, and we push it up here to where that gap is. And look at how perfect that trend line is just has played out. I mean, it hit here. It hit here almost hit here hit here and we're right back at it so there's a lot of reasons why we could actually move back down uh, but if we do break higher you know boy I want to I want to short this I want to I want to short the breakout of all-time highs um, it almost looks like this is due to pull back I mean it's, it's obvious but I still think we have a shot of actually running all right so that's it on that segment um, that's what we've been trading. That's been, you know, now I have a whole new, uh, new setups going out for next week and that's going to start a whole new video. Um, let me set that up right now and I'm, I'm back starting a video up here. I just ran out to get lunch and I'm just going over how the, how, you know, if I'm going to do the HBS watch list or I'm going to, uh, open it up or am I going to just send it out right now? We're probably going to end this video. I'm going to do the watch list separately. Um, that you can get as a member at Day Trading Radio. But there's a couple other things I wanted to talk about. We did have a great trade in CCK. But again, we're talking about going back to that market radar. And I want to, the market radar is basically the outlook of what we're looking looking at. Now, so close to the highs, I'd love to get a pop. Can we look back at any significant, I mean, it's hard to look back at any significant pullback in the market going back the last seven years. I mean, it really is. I mean, we could go to the weekly that gives up some, you know, maybe eight years. I mean, this 2015, 2016 was was basically it, the sideways mark, and then we rallied hard. Um, same thing is happening here. This is our, our only other pullback that we got is the early part of 2018, 
and uh, you know we started breaking out of that again so this market looking very strong definitely seeing going higher and I don't even want to even you know f try to fight you know try to call the market you know because truth is the you know the valuations here everyone has all oh, the stocks are too high or that's all that's just all like opinions you know just like the and I always use the debt you know our our national debt as a great example when we were at you know a trillion dollars and then two trillion everyone told the debts we're going to crash you know our debt you know and now we're wherever we are right now <laughs> multiple trillions of dollars in debt and they continue to say that it's just that's a sign of the times you know more people more expensive is more debt um yeah one day it's going to happen you know it'll be a crisis or something but I don't, you know, that's not my job to call that happening next week. I don't think it is. So this market could easily go through 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, you know, next couple of years, this rally. I'd like to see that. But I've seen the situation before, you know, market here, very bullish going into new highs. We get through some of these issues. That's when we want to be cautious, you know, when things are looking too good. That's where we're going to get the reversal. Um, the weekly... Is embedded and actually starting to turn back up. That's very bullish. So yeah, that the weekly even tells us that, uh, that we have a good shot of actually taking out the the recent highs back here, February, January, February highs. I am um, want to see something that outlines a bottom or a top. The bottoms here divergence is very key. We get a divergence, sell side divergence. Got to be all over that, and we got to believe in it too got to take those puts out there maybe some volatility trades and give it time to work as we trade around the, the market you know we continue to trade it but I think the overall trend will start to turning back down um, you know if we do get a some kind of selling you will have those up days but the majority of them will be down and not to get fooled so that's what we're looking for and that's down the road down down the road um, so let's kind uh, of cut this video here. You're going to stay live with me, and we're going to start the HPS watch list. And if you want to receive the HPS watch list and you're w watching this video later on, just go to daytradingradio.com, sign up for membership. You get all the information, all these videos, all the live trading, the dashboard. Um, you know, you got to see our trading rooms, our traders in there po posting trades every day. It's a really good trading environment, um, and it's very uh, there's a good value to it. And if you want to check it out, try out a trial. There's a uh, there's a 9.95 trial, two week trial, which is uh, very reasonable. Um, also, watch for the next video, not the next video. Watch the video I'm going to do on um, using the tradeometer to trade spy options. I'm going to do a video on that today. That's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Looking forward to doing that. All right. Until then, see you on the, uh, see you on that next video.